Greetings all. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's message, I have entitled it, God will fulfill your dream. In my thumbnail, I have stated that delay is not a denial. Today, I want to talk to somebody like me and you who have been praying for a very long time. You have done everything, you have fasted, and you are still waiting for that miracle to manifest. There is a delay. What I want to say to you this morning or this evening or this afternoon, depending on what time you'll be listening to this video, is that when there is a delay, it's not because there is a denial. It's a process. I want us this morning, this, this time, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, to look at the life of Joseph, who had a dream. And this dream was ultimately fulfilled. The Bible in Genesis 37 from verse 5 to 11, it reads as follows. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Imagine people hating you just because of a dream. They hated him, number one, because he was the youngest. He was, well, there was Benjamin as well. But his father loved him more. His father made or bought a coat of many colors for him. Probably you are in that situation. You are the chosen one. You have a coat of many colors. In your family, you are the one. You are the one favored. You are the one educated. You are the one with money. You are the one with successful children. Things are working for you and others are looking at you and they are saying, hmm, who does he think he is? You have a coat of many colors. You have the anointing, you have the grace. It's like when somebody looks at you, they can say you have everything. It's a coat of many colors. And this coat of many colors is creating problems for you, even with your siblings, even with your co-workers, even with your church goers, even with your co-pastors, fellow ministers. Generally, I don't understand why people don't like, or let me say some people, because if I say people, it's too much of a general statement. Some people just can't stand somebody who is successful. They can just hate you because you are beautiful. They can just hate you in the case of Joseph because he shared a dream. He had a dream. The Bible says his brothers hated him more. They were hating him because of the coat of many colors, because he was loved, because he was favored by his, his, his father. But the dream that he had which he shared with them, made the situation worse. That is why some people may end up advising you, don't talk about your plans. Don't share your dreams. But I remember I listened to one of men of God sharing this word about Joseph. He said, you know what? If Joseph didn't share this dream, what happened to him may not have happened and probably he may not have reached his destiny. So for Joseph to go through everything that he went through, it was part of his prophetic journey. This dream was a prophecy, was a promise that he received from God, which was ultimately fulfilled. Because, but there was a journey that he had to travel between the dream and the fulfillment of the dream. Let me just continue. It says, he said, listen to the dream I had. He was excited. He wanted to share his dream with his brothers. 
Imagine your own blood relatives having a problem with your dream. Your own siblings having a... If it's outsiders, I can understand. But imagine your siblings having a problem with your dream, having a problem with your success. The Bible says we were all... He continues to say we were all in the field tying up sheaves of wheat. When, they, when the sheaf, when my sheaf rather, got up and stood up straight, yours formed a circle around mind and bowed down to it. Do you think you're going to be our king and rule over us? When he narrated this dream, they could already get the interpretation. Oh, it means that his is going to stand up straight. Ours are going to create a circle around his. So it means that he's going to rule over us. They actually got the interpretation correct. His brothers asked, do you think you are going to be a king and rule over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and because of what he said about them. It was not just a dream, it was dreams. Somebody said, you know, when, when a dream comes and another one comes, when it repeats itself, it's a sign that this one is from God. It's a sign that God means business with this dream. So it continues to stay in verse 9. Then Joseph had another dream and said to his brothers, he continued sharing these dreams. You must remember, Joseph was young. He did not know the implication of sharing a dream with brothers or with any other person. He did not have life experience. He did not know that his, his brothers will be offended. He did not know that his siblings will be offended by his success. He did not know that they will even resent him and hate him because of his success. So he said, I had another dream in which I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to me. He also told the dream to his father and his father scolded him. What kind of a dream is that? Even his father was not happy. He scolded him. Do you think that your mother, your brothers and I are going to come and bow down to you? You know what I like is that every time when he told them the dream, he told the dream verbatim. He did not interpret the dream. They are the ones, as they were listening to him, who came up with the interpretation. He was just narrating the dream. So he says, I see the sun and the moon, which represented his parents, and I saw 11 stars. Because remember, he had 11 brothers. All in all, there were 12. I saw them bowing to me. The father scolded him. What does this mean? Do you think that me, your mother, and your brothers, we're going to bow to you? Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. <laughs> but his father kept thinking about the whole matter. The father never forgot, this is what my son dreamt. Because as a parent, you are concerned about the future of your child. As a parent, you are concerned about the destiny of your children. We all want our children to be successful. We all want our children to be even greater than us. You ponder, you think about their dream. You know, this early this morning, I received a message from a parent who wanted an advice regarding the future of his child. I received this message early and I responded early. But then I didn't think that this person will read my message and respond. And then I was surprised. 
she started to respond. And then I realized that, wow, we started to chat about the future. There was an exchange. And you know, my heart went to this parent. I was like, this parent is really concerned for the parent to be up this early hours when I thought that I was just dropping the message and the parent will read it at a later stage. For the parent to even respond, it means that probably she, the parent did not even sleep. The parent is thinking about the future of the child. So it means that Joseph's father was conflicted. He was not jealous, even though he, he scolded him. But he began to think about this dream. On the other hand, the brothers were jealous. The brothers were hateful. They said, who do you think you are? So whatever dream that you have, Hold on to your dream because it shall surely come to pass. You may be in a situation at the moment where, where you are, your situation, your circumstances do not talk to the dreams that you had. It's something to the contrary. It doesn't seem as if it will happen. Because you must remember a dream is a prophecy. Maybe you have received a prophecy. But everything at the moment is contrary to that prophecy. You know, I once encountered a say that says, before the sunrise, just before the sunrise, it gets darker. Maybe the reason why it's darker at the moment in your life, in your situation, in your circumstances, it's because the sun is about to rise. You know, the Bible says, weeping may come at night, but joy comes in the morning. So in other words, there is a season for a night. And there is a season for the morning. And the morning, it's when your glory shines. And your, your, your light it will grow brighter and brighter as the sun arise but at the moment it may not look like that because you are in the night or because it's dawn it's just about to the sun is just about to rise i want to say to you take courage hold on to your dream because your dream will surely come to pass even though that vision may tarry the prophet malaika say but surely it, it will come to pass. Look at the life of, 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 of Joseph. The way his brothers were very, very jealous of him. The Bible says they plan to kill him. But it is Reuben who said, no, let's not kill him. Let's rather put him in a pit. And when the Ishmaelites came, the Bible says the brothers sold him. The Israelites bought him. But he's, he was in a pit. So in that situation that you are going through, in your family, in your workplace, where there are those who are raising against you, God will raise a Reuben. There will be somebody who will talk on your behalf to say, no, let's not kill him. Let's not destroy his character. Let's not demote him. No, she's the one who qualifies for this position. God will raise a Reuben on your behalf. And the Ishmaelites will buy you, as in the situation of Joseph, where they bought him and he ended up in Potiphar's house. From the pit, he went to Potiphar's house. In Potiphar's house, we know that Potiphar's house went, a wife wanted to sleep with him. And then he ended up in prison for being falsely accused. All this journey of being in a pit, of being in, a, in Potiphar's house, of now going to prison for this false rape accusation, did not talk to a man who will one day rule. The circumstances surrounding his, his life were all contrary to the dreams that he had. But he had to go through this journey. What I like more about Joseph and his life is that wherever he was, 
He operated in his gift. He did not forsake his calling because of the challenges that he was experiencing. In Potiphar's house, he was in charge. He excelled. And he refused to sleep with his master's wife. He walked in integrity even in that situation. In prison, it is Joseph who interpreted dreams to the winemaker and to the, to the baker. He walked in that prophetic anointing. Even when he was in prison, he was still a dreamer of dreams. He did not forsake his calling. You know, sometimes as a child of God, when you go through something, you may be tempted to say, I can't even pray. No, that's what the devil wants. Continue to pray. If you don't know how to pray, if you don't know what to say, if you feel like, you know what, I have prayed all the prayer, I don't know what next. Maybe you are even confused. Is this time to pray again or to thank God again? Pray in the spirit. But do not stop to pray. Don't let allow that dream to die. Because that dream will be fulfilled. When we look at Genesis chapter 42, we see after so many things had happened, the dream came into fruition. The dream of Joseph being manifested. Just to not a nutshell of the whole story, he ended up interpreting a, 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 a dream for, for the king and then he was promoted, he was in charge, he was governor. There was famine in the land, yet in Egypt, because of his anointing, they had food and his brothers came to get food like everybody else was coming. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 42, verse 6, or let me start with verse 5, the sons of Jacob, Jacob being Joseph's father, came with others to buy corn because there was famine in the land of Canaan. So they came. Joseph, as governor of the land of Egypt, I just told you he was promoted because of his gift. You know, the Bible says his gift will place you before kings. It is the gift of Joseph that made him to appear before the king. Because these people that were in prison with him, they remembered that there was this Hebrew boy who once interpreted our dreams. When the king had called magicians and the wise men and they could not interpret his dream, Joseph tapped into that anointing and interpreted that dream. So when you are in that situation, don't be tempted to lose yourself, to lose who you are. Regardless of the challenges, remember, please remember, that you are a priest of the Most High. The Bible says, so Joseph, Joseph's ten half-brothers, maybe that is why they hated him. They were actually his half-brothers. But let me continue. They went to buy corn in Egypt, but Jacob did not send Joseph's full brother Benjamin with them. He remained behind because he was afraid that something might happen to him. Now, actually I, went and I, I, I want to go to now verse 6. Joseph, as governor of the land of Egypt, this is where I was, was selling corn to people from all over the world. So Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. You see, this dream has been fulfilled. Even at the time when they were bowing before Joseph, they didn't even know that it's him because he kind of camouflaged himself. He had already mingled in the, in the culture of Egypt. He even spoke the language. So much so, when they were speaking in their own language, they thought that Joseph did not hear them, but he could hear everything that they were saying because he had kind of disguised himself. 
He could recognize them, but they couldn't recognize him. But guess what happened? That dream that happened many years ago when he was a young boy, that happened before the pit, that happened before Potiphar's house, that happened before prison, is now being fulfilled at this time when he was in palace. My prayer to you is that may your dreams be fulfilled. Hold on to your dreams. Look at the life of Joseph. Study the life of Joseph and maintain the attitude that Joseph had throughout this process while he was waiting for the manifestation of the dream. I strongly want to believe that he did not forget the dream as much as his father pondered on it. He did not know how this dream is going to happen. He did not know how this dream is going to be manifested. He continued with his business and life was happening. He did not do things to try and help God. You know, sometimes there's a temptation that when you are given a, a, a prophecy, you want to do something to help. He did not do. He just continued to, to live life. Life was happening. Things were happening. But because this dream that he had many years ago was a dream from God, it came to pass. Even your dream, even your dreams will come to pass. Because it is God who has spoken. Even your prophecy that has been given to you, because it is God who has spoken, it will come to pass. As I conclude, may the good Lord bless you. May it be well with you. And please, do not forget to share this video. Do not share, forget to comment and to subscribe as this will help me to spread the word of God. You are blessed and you are highly favored. Thank you.